In the early hours of May 7, 2025, one of the most significant air combat operations in recent history took place between two heavily armed South Asian countries. The event began with a retaliatory airstrike by one side in response to a deadly attack the previous month, which had caused civilian casualties. The attack had led to a state of heightened military alert on both sides of the border, escalating tensions that eventually led to the largest air battle in decades. The defending air force, anticipating retaliatory action, had maintained a high state of readiness. Its air chief had been residing near the operations center for several days, sleeping on a mattress in an adjacent room. On the night of May, 7, radar systems lit up with alerts showing dozens of incoming aircraft across the border. As the defending forces prepared for engagement, orders were given to scramble a fleet of Chinese-origin J-10C fighter jets, which had been equipped with advanced beyond-visual-range PL-15 missiles. The target priority was clear, intercept the Rafale fighters, French-made, modern, and central to the attacking country's air power. The attackers had mobilized approximately 70 aircraft, including Rafales, Su-30 MKIs, and Mirages. On the defending side, around 40 aircraft were scrambled, making the total number involved in the engagement approximately 110, according to military experts. This encounter was not a close-range dogfight. Rather, it was a standoff battle executed from long distances using high-speed missiles, advanced radar, and complex electronic warfare techniques. The critical point in this conflict was not only the weapons or aircraft used but the situational awareness and intelligence that guided their deployment. The attacking Rafale pilots, based on their briefings, believed they were operating outside the lethal range of the PL-15 missile, assumed to be around 150 kilometers based on publicly available data on the missile's export variant. However, intelligence on the defending side had not only recognized the extended range capability of the PL-15, estimated at over 200 kilometers, but had also used that advantage to conduct a deliberate long-range ambush. As the engagement unfolded in darkness, one Rafale was struck by a PL-15 missile launched from well outside the Indian Air Force's expected threat envelope. This resulted in the first known downing of a Rafale in combat. Multiple international sources later confirmed the loss, including a senior French Air Force official and a Dassault aviation executive who briefed lawmakers. The Indian government, however, did not officially acknowledge the loss, consistent with standard defense protocol in sensitive engagements. This strike did not happen in isolation. The defending air force had successfully established a kill chain, a term in military doctrine referring to a linked network of sensors, communications, and shooters that operate across air, land, sea, and space domains. Four senior officials confirmed that their systems combined data from ground-based radar, airborne early warning aircraft, and space-based sensors. One of the technological enablers of this was the locally developed Data Link 17 system. This digital network allowed information sharing in real time between various platforms, including Swedish Saab Area AEW and C systems and the Chinese origin J 10C fighters. What made this network particularly effective was its ability to allow the J 10Cs to fly with their onboard radars switched off, making them harder to detect, while still receiving a constant flow of targeting data from other platforms. This is a modern concept in aerial warfare, decentralized sensor fusion. It reduces the electromagnetic footprint of the aircraft, minimizes detection risks, and increases the element of surprise. Meanwhile, the attacking side faced complications integrating its own battlefield data. Its air fleet includes platforms acquired from several different suppliers, France, Russia, Israel, and the United States, which, despite individually being highly capable, lack a seamless integration network. The difficulty in fusing data from diverse origins made it harder for the attacking force to form a coherent, real-time understanding of the battlefield. According to internal sources, this gap in digital situational awareness was a key contributor to the surprise element exploited by the defenders. During the same engagement, there were also reports of electronic warfare measures targeting aircraft sensors and communications. The defending side claimed to have jammed or interfered with radar and communications systems used by the attacking aircraft. While officials from the other side acknowledged that some disruption had occurred, they denied that core systems on the Rafales were blinded. However, they did concede that electronic interference may have affected older aircraft, especially Su-30 MKIs, prompting immediate post-battle system upgrades. Following the shootdown and associated losses, tactical doctrines were quickly revised. A shift occurred from limited response to broader counter-strikes. 
High-precision BrahMos cruise missiles, developed domestically with foreign cooperation, were used to strike multiple radar installations, air defense positions, and infrastructure sites within the defending country. Notably, one surveillance aircraft parked at an airbase was destroyed in a hangar by a targeted missile strike. These escalatory actions occurred between May 7 and May 10 and were confirmed by officials from both sides. A ceasefire was declared on May 10 after international diplomatic intervention. Throughout the four-day engagement period, thousands of personnel and nearly 200 aircraft were involved in a complex dance of deterrence, precision, electronic warfare, and political messaging. In the weeks that followed, reports emerged suggesting the defending country had possibly received real-time satellite and radar support during the conflict. This led to accusations from the other side that the engagement was influenced by live inputs from a foreign strategic partner. No concrete proof was made public, and the accused state responded by calling its military cooperation normal and not targeted at any third party. However, what is not disputed is that immediately after the battle, senior military officials from that supporting nation visited the defending country and were briefed on the integration of Chinese origin platforms into a successful combat scenario. This combat episode had broader geopolitical consequences as well. After the loss of the Rafale, share prices of its manufacturing company declined. One Southeast Asian country that had signed a major Rafale deal publicly announced it was now reconsidering its purchase and evaluating the J-10C instead. For the country supplying the J-10C, this served as a de facto advertisement of battlefield credibility for its defense exports. Defense analysts reviewing the engagement emphasized that superiority in air combat is no longer dictated solely by platform performance. What truly matters is the integration of sensors, data, decision-making speed, and electronic dominance. The use of long-range missiles like the PL-15, deployed from beyond visual and radar range, confirmed that aerial warfare has entered a new era, where software, communication networks, and operational integration outweigh sheer firepower. Ultimately, the May, 2025 air battle may be remembered not just for the loss of a cutting-edge fighter jet, but as a demonstration of the evolving future of warfare, where the side with better information and real-time battlefield awareness can dominate, even against technologically advanced adversaries.